Hi, graduate research assistant Alyssa Kane here, and I'm socially distanced at the park today to tell you about another research project of mine, and that's irrigation frequencies and evapotranspiration replacement affecting annual bluegrass populations in Western Oregon. So this is part of the USDA SCRI annual bluegrass herbicide resistance grant to assess how annual bluegrass populations are affected by cultural management techniques within a mixed standard turf, so essentially as a weed. And this grant, along with some preliminary findings from two OSU turfgrass alumni, suggests that ET replacement may be a viable weed control option. All right, jumping to the PowerPoint now. The goal of this project was to determine the optimal irrigation regimen for suppressing annual bluegrass in perennial ryegrass stands during the summer months. Our experimental design was a two by two factorial with four replications assessing two different frequencies, so once or four times a week and two different rates, 45% and 80% reference evapotranspiration replacement. These were used to assess the establishment of annual bluegrass in perennial ryegrass maintained at two inches. We didn't see a significance in the amount of ET replaced at 45 or 80% on the percent annual bluegrass or soil volumetric water content. However, the amount of ET replaced in September was deemed to be significant. And September was the month in which turf grass quality was the lowest, so the extra bit of irrigation back into the system made a great improvement on the stand. The majority of the differences were seen in the frequency of irrigation, though, so once or four times per week. In the month of August, there was a dramatic decrease in annual bluegrass plants when watered once per week compared to four times per week. Additionally, irrigation frequency made a significant difference in turf grass quality in August and September, with once per week yielding lower turf grass quality. Lastly, plots irrigated four times per week had greater soil volumetric water content than plots receiving water once per week. So to kind of wrap things up, stands that were watered once per week tend to have less annual bluegrass encroachment and a lower soil water volumetric content than those of the plots watered four times per week. Additionally, the plots that were watered four times per week tend to have a better turf grass quality than those watered once per week. And in addition to that, we looked at ET replacement back into the system, so those are 45 and 80%, and neither of those had significant differences month to month until we got to September. And in September, the plots that received 80% replacement ET tend to have a better turf grass quality than that of the 45 replaced ET. So in conclusion, this is our first year worth of data, and I think we're really excited to see what the second year of data has to offer. Thank you for watching my summer field day video, and for more summer field day videos from our crew, please visit our Oregon State University Turfgrass YouTube page. And also for more information about our program, go to oregonstate.edu slash beaverturf for more information or follow us on Twitter at OSU Beaverturf. We look forward to seeing you on September 2nd from 9 to 11 Pacific for our live Q&A. Thanks for watching.